John Maxwell, a well-known expert on leadership, accurately points out that the success or failure of any endeavor is determined by the quality of its leadership. Whether it's leading a small team, or a church group, or a large corporation, or a government department, your ability to influence others and bring value to their lives is crucial for achieving ultimate success. For the past 50 years, FOCUS has lived out its goal of developing leaders and making a positive impact in people's lives. Whether it's nurturing leaders to lead small group Bible studies or grooming the CU Executive Committee members, FOCUS Kenya primary focus is on shaping leaders with strong character, fostering excellence, teamwork, creativity and innovation in addition to skill building. The first ever exciting thing for me in the Christian Union was the hands of fit classes that we had. The class that really impacted me was the leadership class. And from there I really I really admired to be a leader and that is why even I am here today. From that 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 lesson I really I learned a lot on communication, decision making. There are very many things that I learned on how to be a leader. CU has provided a forum for, because we are all leaders, it has, it has provided a forum for all of us to lead. And God has molded us and I know we are the generation that is going to lead this country and take it to another level. But then there are other things that FOCUS has taught, that, that has taught me through the leadership of course. By the way, I have been in leadership in FOCUS for as long as I remember. As soon as I finished them, I joined the Elred FOCUS Associate as the secretary to the branch, then took over the branch as the chair and grew the branch. Then I left the country. Then we came, I came back and of course found myself in the regional leadership. I would come to the regional, to the national governing council. And you see everybody has a file with their documents, okay? I didn't find that in Senate here. So when I was told to set up a company, I was like, I want to set it up the way I have learned to sit in a board in focus. Okay? So I got, of course I was given a secretary and an administrator. So I told the secretary, get this number of files. There's a, if you look at those files, there's a, there's a file for every board member. And then there are files for every income generating unit. And then there are files for, you know, and we would file. So when we have a board meeting, these are the things that I learned <laughs> through the board meetings in Focus. I would have all the agenda and then I have all the supporting documents in them. And a presentation as a managing director in every board meeting. So when we met the first time, I remember the VC, the, the chair of the board was shocked because he had never seen things done that way. <laughs> you get that? And he's like, wow, everybody has a file. You know, they were all being mesmerized about this. And every meeting, you want to track from the first meeting to the last, there are files to that effect. And they would make, you know, you are free to make notes in those files. So when we are done, my secretary would withdraw the files and would go through the notes. If you wrote something, we can pick up what you wrote. So that's something I learned uh, uh, through George Ogalo and his team as, as we, we ran the, the Ministry of Focus. Yeah. So it was not just a, a wasted time serving in Focus. Uh, you begin to think of uh, most of the major Christian organizations in the country. They are led by focus people. You go to NCCK, you go to Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, uh, you go to uh, uh, Scripture Union now, <laughs> and even Scripture Union before, Africa Evangelistic Enterprise, and I've not mentioned churches. Uh, we'd go to SITAM, we'd go to Deliverance Churches, we'd go to uh, all kinds of churches, uh, and you find focus people giving leadership in those areas. Every year, at least 4,000 students benefit from our leadership program. Our goal is to increase this number to 10,000 by expanding our training facilities through the Hatua project. The vision to have facilities is not new because those who acquired the 2.3 acre piece of land here had a vision to have facilities for training and developing young people. And so this is really uh, expanding what there is, you know, making a step to expand what there is so that it can be able to match up the needs 
uh, of the society. But also, it is a step because it is, a, in one way, it is also a step to be able to engage the realities we have, the crisis we have in our nation, the issues of corruption, the issues of ethnicity and moral decadence that we have in our society. Hatua is, is, is a step to be able to, to engage those, those, those realities. Hatua is a vision of transformation to train young people, to develop young people uh, in this nation, to be able to uh, live up to the values of our country and the values of Jesus Christ. The idea of expanding facilities to match our growth has been in the minds of focus leaders for a long time. I tried uh, to start a conference center for focus. I had uh, K and K, Kebathi and Kemathi, uh, design a conference center. And I took it to the IFES and said, can you allow me, I'm not asking you to fund it, but you, can you allow us in Kenya to start a conference center or a place that can become a focus center. Today, we have the Kasarani Center. It became a reality. We had a dream, we had drawn it, but we couldn't do it because the time was not ripe. In 1980, we were in a Kabrak conference. Kabrak uh, High School, the North University, there wasn't the university. And uh, the conference, as we were holding the conference, uh, the president, uh, knowing obviously his house is there, he came and visited. Uh, and uh, uh, he was very keen that there are students who are very committed to, to Christ and uh, to serve him. And uh, then he called, uh, uh, he called me uh, who was the chairman uh, the Nasek so to speak mm -hmm. but he called me and Joshua and into our an office and he told us uh, we would want to give a donation how much would you want we looked at each other and we didn't say anything he asked again how much would you want <laughs> uh, we did not say anything so he, he produced a check and signed 40,000 shillings. That time it was a lot of money. I'm not uh, mentioning that it was significant just because we received money, but because that is what became the seed money for all what we are focused is only. Uh, finally, it bought the first plot, which we sold, and now uh, started the construction, because the land in which we are in was donated by the government much later. But the, by that money was the seed money for the plot that we had bought before and later sold and started the construction. Around the uh, late 80s, again with that expansion and growth of the work, we needed um, a bigger, we needed a center. Yeah. We were at this time based in Ofugamano House. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt like then, uh, uh, like now, mm -hmm. uh, the need to, to have uh, a place of uh, our own where we could do uh, uh, you know, student training mm -hmm. and, uh, and also a base for, for the focus ministry. Yeah. At that point, what used to happen with uh, churches and Christian organizations mm -hmm. is that if they needed a piece of land, mm -hmm they would find a way of uh, going to the then president, Moy, mm -hmm. uh, to be given a plot of land. Mm -hmm. He said, it would be very easy for us to go and ask the president. But if we do, we would be saying this land was given by the president. Mm -hmm. We want this land to come from God and we don't want anything that would remove mm -hmm. that from being the case. Yeah. So as much as we could have gone to the president, mm -hmm. we decided no, we are going to apply in the normal way. Mm -hmm. And we are going to ask brethren for prayers mm -hmm. that that may be granted. It's a long story, yeah. but it came to a point where uh, the every time before I went to the office at Fugamano, mm -hmm. 
I would pass through the office of the commissioner of lands. Wow. Until he got tired mm -hmm. of me being there every morning. This one time he he called me into his office. Mm -hmm. Young man, come. Mm -hmm. What is it that you've been looking for? Then I explained. Mm -hmm. And then he called the director of survey. Mm -hmm. And he said, go with this young man. Mm -hmm. Give him some options of where they can put up. What did you say you want to put up? A, a student center. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me know which one he chooses. Mm -hmm. So we went and we were given some options. Now I can't remember the details, mm -hmm. but one of them I think was in Kisarian. Mm -hmm. I think another one was in Gong mm -hmm. and then Kasarani. Kasarani. Yeah. And uh, so we, we had a party of a team of people mm -hmm went and visited the locations all, all those locations yeah. and then uh, we chose we, ch we chose Kasarani. Okay. and because uh, this land was given in that way mm -hmm. it was very clear mm -hmm. this was the hand of god yeah. we got the land mm -hmm. uh, we got uh, the title mm -hmm. and we fenced it and, and the fencing was mm -hmm. done by by students mm -hmm. so by the time joshua was leaving we had just got the piece of land. So now how do we uh, move to that place? So raising funds, uh, building the facilities, moving to the place, that became my, my job. When we started, it was a very ambitious uh, project. We had hostels, uh, we had staff uh, houses, we had meeting places. Uh, it was a huge, <laughs> a huge complex. And we had faith that it could be done. <laughs> so we were actually raising money for the whole complex. Um, I can't remember the figures now. So, but the money was not coming as fast, though we still had some. So with the money that we had, we realized we can't wait until everything is done. Let's start with the smallest block in the complex, and that was the staff uh, housing. So we said, if we start with the staff housing, we can take one of the apartments and use it as offices, uh, while the staff also, because housing staff was also very expensive. So the staff can be housed there. And uh, we had done enough fundraising to be able to complete that block. Uh, the final, I remember the final, what we call the final push. Uh, we, we raised just a little less because I think it was about 11 million. The, Q, the, the bill of quantities has talked about 11 million. I think we had raised almost 10 million. So we knew this one, at least we can complete, move into the place and continue raising money uh, to put in the other infrastructure. So that's what we did. We started the construction. Now, then came the golden bug crisis uh, of the early 90s. And the shilling went bust from 16 shillings to the dollar, where it had been for a long time. You could even write it in books. Uh, <laughs> the shilling was 16 shillings to, to one dollar. Yeah. It moved all the way to 80 wow. to one dollar. So you can see what happened to our money. So the money that was supposed to build the whole block could not even put the foundation. <laughs> so the money got finished at foundation level. So there we are now almost stuck. So we continue to, uh, people could continue to contribute and we are just barely able to put uh, the first slab uh, and then we decided let's complete the one of the rooms, one of the flats, and move in, one of the apartments and move in. So that's how we moved into one of them. Uh, upstairs was not done. Uh, there was just a slab. Uh, but we continued uh, raising funds. By the time I came in, the, the staff quarters had been constructed, uh, but we re reconfigured those staff quarters. Uh, and, uh, and put up the current uh, focus staff office. 
uh, it was being put up uh, on a temporary basis, very quickly uh, on a temporary basis. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, 20 years later, it is still, still the it is still, <laughs> it is still there. The but the, there is construction for new yes. that is going on. Yes. Uh, so we are we are happy. Even when putting the staff houses, it was clear that that's only a beginning. When putting the, up the current staff offices, uh, it was clear those are temporary. Uh, our journey is longer than that. Uh, and, and it only required other staff to come and say, let's begin the journey. I found when the infrastructure issue was inevitable agenda um, at Focus. So for me, um, while I was there, Myself, together with the leadership, the board, we, we picked that issue. And instead of focusing on the hostel issue, no, the staff quarters, we thought, there is this space here. So what's the future of this? So we just basically said, let's think big. I think thinking big was part of, uh, part of the game. Think beyond what you can see. And so Atua was born uh, after exploring many options of how we could develop that um, that, that, that place. So the shape that we have now was informed by the fact that Focus, other than associates um, supporting the ministry and of course students financially, we needed to have some, some investment that was different to be able to support Focus work. Yeah. Now, it is our time to actualize this dream that is going to transform this nation by developing many more ethical and value-based leaders. And I remember when we were uh, coining the word Hatua with Brother Kimosop and uh, Brother, Brother Njaki, you know, one thing that came to our mind was we are saying Hatua is making up your mind. Decide now. And why were we saying decide now? The question we asked ourselves is, what is the role of focus in this country? And for those who are going to have children in university, or grandchildren in university, or are having children on campus right now, would you want to have some light, some salt on campus? Does having a Christian student on campus affect the other students who could be coming into college, into their doors, uh, rooms, drunk? The truth of the matter is that the Christian student in that age set remains a reference point for the others. What does that mean? It means that having a Christian student on campus is very critical. So why Hatua? Anybody who is looking for good leadership, anybody who is looking for a, a, a society that has people, young people who are saying, because of our love for the Lord, we shall also do, be good to humanity. And uh, I'm calling on all of us, who cares about a nation that requires to have salt and light? No matter how dark the situation may be, that little light, we need to plug in. By supporting Hatua, you will be joining like-minded Christians who aspire for positive societal change. What started as an idea has now become a tangible project with the construction of the Kasarani Student Center underway, the acquisition of the land for Student Center in Nakuru and Western regions, as well as the 30-acre piece of land in Pwani for a proposed student conference center. Chuku Hatu Asasa and help in raising the 200 million balance that is needed to complete the first phase of the project. You can support through MPESA pay bill number, 412412, account name Hatua, or go to www.payments.focuskenya.org. Act now, shape the future.